Hi, welcome to phase one, part two. For this part, what you are going to do is you are going to be collecting all of the information that you will need in order to do your data analysis in phase one, part three. So to collect your data, what you are going to do is you're gonna click on this site right here, um, and it gives you information for almost every single university on that list. If it is missing, if you cannot find one of your universities, then just do a quick Google search to see if you can find the information. Anything that you cannot find, make sure that you leave it blank. Do not put any zeros in here. Zeros will throw off the entire um, project and it will mess with your sample. So make sure that you only put in data that you can find. If you cannot find it, leave it blank. So what you are going to do is you're gonna collect information for each of your universities that you collected in your sample. So I'm just gonna pull up, this was my random sample um, that I showed you guys how to do. Yours are going to be different. Nobody should be exactly the same because of the fact that you're doing a random sample. So my first university is Oklahoma Panhandle State University. So if you wanted to, you could just highlight this university and control and C or right click. You could also right click on there and copy. I hit control C because it's a lot faster. Um, if you have a Mac, hit command C. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna look at the first university. I'm gonna go, I would click on this website. I already have it open, um, but I would come to this website. This is the College Navigator um, University. You're gonna type in the name of the school. So I would just hit paste, control V, or you can right click and hit paste. I hit control and the letter V as in Victor. And then I hit enter and we notice that there's only one university that comes up. So Oklahoma Panhandle State University is the university that I'm going to go through. So what you are going to do is on your Excel document, you would create a column for each of yours. So let's say that for this one, I have in-state, and I'm not gonna do this for all of them, but for this one, I'm gonna do in-state tuition. That way, everybody knows what this is talking about. And I would do the same thing for all of them, okay? So for the in-state tuition, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to tuition fees and estimated student expenses. You're going to go to the very latest that you have. So 2016, 2017 is the latest that we have. And you can see right here that this is our in-state is $7,294. You can copy this, but here's where you have to be very careful. Because when I copy this and I paste it into here, so I'm just gonna, you can either right click or you can just hit Control and V and it should paste it in here. The problem with this is sometimes when you paste it, it actually does recognize it as currency. For this one, it did recognize it as currency. You wanna make sure that it doesn't say text. Like if I would have put the 7,294 and it says text at the top, notice right here it says text and it gives me a green error up here. This is saying, hey, this number is stored as, X, as text. Should I convert it to a number? And we want to convert it to a number um, to format it as currency, you can actually select currency here and it will select currency. If you wanna get rid of decimal places, you can do that. Um, so again, it kinda just depends. You wanna make sure that it does say currency because if it doesn't say currency, I know that these are different font sizes. Um, you can just highlight the whole thing to get it all the same. Maybe you wanted to use Calibri for all of them and then you can hit enter, it will, do it however. So it's one of those things that you do want to make sure that these are formatted correctly or else moving into the next part, it will not work. So again, if you type in here and it says text um, and you type in a number value, these are not the correct numbers. I'm just putting in numbers. Make sure that if you see this green, that means that your Excel is seeing this number as text and it will not work for the next part. So I'm just going to delete these out of here because I didn't need them. Um, and then you would continue. So I would do my out-of-state tuition um, would be the 8,233 and so on. So we're done with tuition. And notice the next thing that we have on here is the average dollar amount of financial aid. So we're gonna come back here to our financial aid and we're gonna click on the financial aid tab. And the only thing that we want to do is you're gonna go down for all undergraduate students. I wanna go to the un all undergraduate students um, and we wanna look for um, the grant 
or scholarship aid. So what you are doing is you are looking for, um, we're not looking for loans. We don't want the loans, we want the grant or scholarship aid, and we're gonna go to the dollar amount of aid received. So again, if you wanted to, you could just copy this and you can come back to Excel and whatever one you have set up, then you can just hit Control and V or you can right click. Just make sure that it is formatted correctly. So this one is formatted as currency, so that's good. If it was text and it gives you an error, you do have to change it, okay? Um, so the next category that we're moving into, and for this one, for both of these proportion categories, they're gonna give it to you as a percent. You do have to change it to a decimal. So for the proportion of students receiving financial aid, um, that comes right here, the percent receiving financial aid, so we had 73%. So again, if you wanna hit Control and C to copy it, and then you can come to your next category, do make sure that you've named everything. I know that I'm not modeling that, but you can figure that out. Make sure you've named every single category. Um, click Control and V, it puts it as a percent. What we wanna do is change it to a number and notice it automatically changes it to a decimal. So if you use the built-in features of Excel, just make sure that it doesn't say text. Again, if it says text, you do need to change it, okay? Um, so for the next category, we have size of enrollment and we are only looking for undergraduate students. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close the financial aid and I am going to come down to enrollment and we wanna look for the total um, undergraduate enrollment right here, it gives you the number, so 1,207. I would paste that number in. Again, um, you can copy it, just hit Control and C to copy and then paste it in, or you can type it in yourself. Just make sure that it is not formatted as text. Okay, and then the last thing that we wanted to look at is, um, so size of enrollment, now we wanna look at the graduation rate as our last category. So we would have a sixth column titled, Graduation rate, again, you wanna make sure that this is as a decimal and not as a percent. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to retention and graduation rates, and there's a lot of information that's going to come up on here. Um, but what we are looking for is just the overall graduation rate right here. So the 24%, there's more information. If you wanna look it down, it does break it down by a lot of other things. Um, but the only one that I want you to look at is the overall graduation rate, not by gender, the overall graduation and transfer out rate. So we just want the overall graduation rate is 24%. So only 24% of students um, who began their studies in fall of 2010 graduated by 2000, four years later. So the overall graduation rate is 24%. Again, if you put this into here, um, I'm skipping rows, this would be 24%. So notice if I just type in 0.24 on this and I don't change it, that it gives me the green arrow, I do wanna make sure that I convert this to a number so it sees it as a number, okay? Um, for this part, it is very, very important that you have your Excel document formatted correctly. If you do not, part three will not work for you. Okay, so if you have any questions on this, please make sure that you reach out to me. Um, to submit when you're done, just click on the phase one part two and whatever you saved it as, you'll just come to the bottom down here. Um, it didn't allow me to go to it. Sorry, let me try that again. Phase one part two. And then you would submit this. You're just going to browse my computer, whatever you saved it as. Again, for Mac users, if you have it open, make sure you close it and save it. Otherwise, if it's open, it will upload a temporary file and I won't be able to open it. If it's anything other than Excel, I will not grade it. Um, please reach out to me for any questions or um, you can always go to the tutoring center. But again, please make sure that you submit just an Excel document. As always, thanks for watching.